Then let's welcome Mr. Will Smalley. <laughs> Hello, folks. How are you? Good. Um, here's the deal, guys. Right off the bat, I am uh, I am what the scientists call a homosexual. I um, I will prove it to you by the end of the night. <laughs> I, um, I tell you up front because sometimes people don't believe me. You now it's haircut that it happens. Um, I did a show recently where a woman comes up to me after the show and she goes, uh, "You know, Will, I don't buy it. I don't buy that you're gay. Like I'm doing it for the parking spaces." <laughs> she pushed on. She goes, "Here's the thing, Will. You don't really read as gay." That is the only thing I could say at the time. I said, well, you've never seen me read. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Any compliments like that a lot, uh, where they like, and I think here's what it is. I think what it is is I, and I'm not doing my own here, I think I'm a high functioning gay. Uh, there's a spectrum, it's like autism. Um, <laughs> and I think I'm high functioning. And, and you, I mean, you guys know what low functioning is. That's the guy in the train where you're like, that guy is fucking gay. Holy shit. Wow. It's him against the world. Hey, <laughs> he will never get a job. Uh, I got a job. Um, high functioning. Um, yeah, uh, as, a, as, a, as a high functioning gay, I feel the need to tell you about my coming out experience. And it's, it's foreign to most people, and it's like the most off ass question I get. They want to know about it. Um, and that was like a hard time in life, a real tumultuous time. And it, you know, the coming out experience for me really wasn't. The, Time leading up to that, that was horrible. But um, but my mom was the first person I told, and uh, was a, you know, I told I told her, and she goes, I know. <laughs> Did my mom just call me a faggot? <laughs> that was, uh, I was nervous about telling my dad though. It was the last person I told. It was a late night conversation. And I put it off. And I put it off. And I uh, finally tell him. Finally say the words that I need to say. And this is what he says verbatim. That's where he got. He goes. Oh, thank God, I thought you were going to ask me for money. <laughs> Which is actually true, because being gay is super expensive. It's a, it's a lifestyle I can't keep up with. Actually, it's all by themselves. It's a ridiculous. You would think half the shirt, half the price. It's not. It's the price. It's a racket. It's a ridiculous racket. <laughs> It's made of mesh, it's not even a full shirt. Less <laughs> material, the same price. I've had a real uh, crazy year this year. Uh, I got engaged to be married. Um, and then I got unengaged to be married. No, I was gonna say disengaged, sounds much cooler. Disengaged. Like we're gay robots or something, it's a robosexual. I really wish that happened when, when we broke up. Disengaged! <laughs> it's crazy, like, we went from planning a, a, a gay wedding to not, like, we went from 60 to zero. And, and I'm relieved I'm not planning a gay wedding anymore, because that's fucking horrible. I don't know if anyone's ever planned a wedding, it's the worst thing. Because uh, I don't know the first thing I'm planning a regular wedding, never mind a fucking fabulous one. <laughs> It's not that I lived like a fabulous lifestyle. People just had high expectations for what a gay wedding was going to be. Thought of I was gay tonight. I it was not it's not going to be that. Uh, and I'm, I'm upset for one reason. Uh, well, one, uh, the love of my life is gone. Um, and two, <laughs> guys, so <settle> that. <laughs> one of you could be him. But I'm, not, I'm upset because I won't get to have a bachelor party, and that's that would have been the, that's gonna be the real fun thing. Because uh, people in my life owe me shit, basically. 
Because so I've got to bachelor parties on the other side, and I wanted them to come to mine and experience the uncomfortable feelings that I had at theirs. Because so, I recently, I know, I was best man recently for my brother at his wedding, and we, uh, we did the, like, the typical bachelor party thing. We went down to the casino, or we went to a ladies' strip club. I don't know if that's what you call it, but that's what I'm going to call it. So, and my brother, he buys me a lady lap dance. Again, I don't know if that's what you call it, but that's what I'm going to call it. So I have to apply, because he's paid for it. And, uh, at a moment of crisis before the stripper starts in, I'm like, do I tell her that I'm gay? I don't want, I don't want her to feel bad. That nothing's going to happen out there. So I tell her, she goes, oh, thank you. I'll her. I'll her. So she starts into the dance, she's grinding my crotch. And, uh, I'm coming for tattoos, we're talking about Downton Abbey. Uh, <laughs> what do you do strippers? Polite. Uh, I swear to God, she turns to me, she's grinding on me, she turns to me, she goes, uh, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry, I, I have to take my top off, it's protocol. Is OSHA here? I don't do that. OSHA's an organization, it's not another stripper. Um, it's not a giant stripper that's OSHA. So she says, she, she, you know, she's grabbing me, and she, I swear to God, she turns around and she goes, Oh my God, I feel so bad for you. I was like, No, that's not how this dynamic works. <laughs> You don't feel bad for me, I feel bad for you. <laughs> Technically, in society standards, you're the only one I can feel bad for. It goes stripper, gay guy, gay guy on Bravo. That's how, <laughs> that's how high hierarchy folks. <laughs> before uh, before I, I broke up with my, uh, my boyfriend, he was my fiance. I called him my fiance, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> you guys can use that. But we moved in together. We moved to like a kind of an old-fashioned area. And uh, when we moved in, we were standing on our front porch with our landlady. And this old woman, this neighbor across the way, she, she comes and she brings us flowers, which is a nice neighborly gesture. As she hands us the flowers, our landlady speaks up and goes, uh, now you guys, put those in a vase. You do have a vase, right? And I swear to God, this old woman leans in and goes, oh, I bet they have a lot of vases. <laughs> What the fuck is that shit? That is the most offensive thing anyone has ever said to me. So I spoke up right away. I was like, uh, listen, old bitch. Uh, we don't have a lot of bases. We have a lot of pauses. Uh, I thought, you know, 